of all the souls that walk on this mother earth there is just a handful that would actually stand for her these are dark times where man is man's biggest foe even when the sun comes up these rakshasas are roaming freely despite all such of all the possible permutations and combinations of people i could meet i had the opportunity to meet and know this blessed divine soul just remember when you learn about an enlightened being your regular logic does not apply to that person today's tale is of rk and i total strangers who turned into blood brothers this is krishna dev roy chairperson of pratyangira group and this is our story Arke's life has never been easy. Gravity did extra work on him. Right after he was born, the doctor dropped him. Then his aunt, his uncle later. Arke's grandfather picked him up and scolded the people that kept dropping the baby. While yelling at them, his shaky hands dropped him again. You can't blame them, you know. There was an instance where he escaped and fell down the cradle on his own once. People were scared to pick him up because he kept dropping. Birds started orbiting his head. While the earth was rotating along its own axis his brain started rotating in the opposite direction he couldn't count 2 and 2 because he started seeing 4 and 4 in other words he was born as a character that sadguru would call shankaran pillai but his parents called him ramakrishna because every time he fell down someone would scream rama rama or krishna krishna his family hailed from a small town tenali but then migrated to devpur their family name soon turned to tenali thus was born my very dumb friend Tenali RK In the meanwhile I was a baby born with a silver spoon my father Vikram Roy and my mother Radhe Roy were textile merchants she was a devotee of Krishna while my father wanted to name me after his father Devendra Roy my mother wanted to name me after Krishna thus I come Krishna Dev Roy from an early age I was taught the value of Indian textiles the uniqueness and fineness of it this influence later built a knack for everything that is Indian deep within me When you look at the world people value art the best paint exhibitions antique collections sculptures and such are regarded the most and it's a billion dollar industry but in our nation sadly the artists struggle quite much because of least or no encouragement there is an ocean of talent but only a stream of opportunities hence i established prachangira art gallery named after the family business prachangira textiles though this was a very minute part of the prachangira group my interests always lay in the art gallery the most as this is not just an art collection but my nation's heritage i am a proud holder of 17000 paintings by contemporary artists 1800 antiques and seven paintings that age at least 700 years till now my initiative has fed at least 1000 artists and their families When all was fine something terrible had happened at our gallery our grandest exhibition of all such great art was supposed to be in 6 months beating the top tech security that we had installed for the antique paintings a bunch of robbers breached my gallery of all the seven four paintings were successfully stolen while the fifth painting gave out an alarm before any of my security could do anything the miscreants had fled with four paintings that cumulatively cost 17 crores more than the cost they were a cultural heritage meant for the world to witness many guests including international delegates would have seen a failure not just on my part but the country's neither could we announce an official complaint alarming the investors of the event nor could we carry out the whole investigation on our own i needed help just my power was not sufficient to drag me out of the mess that was created i looked up to the skies begging for a savior i could just sigh and hope that the universe had a plan and it did arke was working as a painter no no not artistic he was just painting the walls of devpur a few kids were in a habit of throwing eggs at him few grown educated idiots had their ego satisfied by drenching him in paint no matter what arke wouldn't utter a curse against these he was such a blissful soul who'd naturally wash off dirt thrown at him all that mattered to him was the paint that he did the colors the mix of it seeing his condition and the low pay he requires every house in town would hire him for repaints every once in a year or so it so happened that right in the middle of the day 
The cloud of need that I had in my darkest hour traveled all the way to RK's village. RK was generally painting a public wall commissioned by the local municipality. The lightnings in the sky scared RK. His mother had taught him to think of Arjuna when in fear. He started chanting the various names of the said warrior. Arjuna, Halguna, Kiriti. He went on mumbling while painting. His intelligence did not tell him to stop and seek shelter as a huge rain was about to drop. Few well-educated adults surrounded him, teasing him for his dumbness and drenched him in red paint as usual. They mocked him for not taking shelter and went their way to hide their heads. This time, RK was both scared and humiliated, arising a different level of frustration. The thunders roared. He shouted back at the thunders to stop screaming at him. The thunders roared yet again. He yelled back. This went on for quite a while. Even street dogs were strangely watching this man barking at the thunders. He looked up at the mountain that was close to the clouds. He challenged the clouds and the thunders to stare right there and that he was coming for them. They rode back. RK started climbing the mountain. To his astonishment, the clouds were still over his head, roaring at him. It got scarier. More the steps he took, more the insults he remembered from all his life. Every thunder gave his mind grief. The very air that blew burdened his chest with memories of disgrace. The flashes in the skies reminded him of all the people that laughed at him. By the time he reached the mountain top, he began hating his whole life. In front of him stood a vast temple, almost demolished. He knew not of this, for he never had the need to climb this mountain. Neither did most of the people from the village, except to collect fruits and vegetation. RK walked close to the cliff, near to which stood the shrine of goddess Kali, almost in ruins. Her eyes were closed, which was unusual for a Kali idol. He decided to jump and end his misery. The mockery that the sky did frustrated him enough to end his life, but his weak heart was scared to do the act. He closed his eyes. He remembered the story told by his mother. Arjuna, the warrior, during his exile, had to fetch arms. During one such rainy day, a lightning dare hit him. But being a master of Atharvana Veda, Arjuna could pack the thunders into his bag, scaring Varunadeva, the god of rains. Arjuna was apologized to and the thunders were released back. RK started reciting Arjuna's multiple names for gaining such courage, ignore the thunders and jump. Arjuna, Halguna, Kiriti, Partha, Svetavahana, Bhibadza, Vijaya, Krishna, Savyasachi, Dhanunjaya. He went on. He looked down the steep valley and was about to jump. A lightning hit a dead tree that was quite close to him, lighting it on fire. The force threw him right into the Kali shrine through a broken wall. He hit his head for the last time at Goddess Kali's feet. He fell unconscious. The skies cleared slowly. It took a while, but RK woke up to see the burning tree. Something very elemental had changed about him. He just sat there, gazing at the flames. His whole body started feeling heavy, so heavy that he could not move his fingers. As if the burden of the universe rested on his shoulders, his flesh felt pressure. Watching the flames dazzle to the wind made his heart soothe. Then he began feeling lighter and lighter until he felt as if he were a cotton ball. All the pain, all the sorrow, emotions that he burdened upon himself with began to release. He had learned to let go. That was it. In his own words, it was the moment of enlightenment for that soul. He spent hours watching the tree burn down to ashes. And then, he did not need fire to stay in the state of Samadhi. He became unnatural. Three days passed by. Who would worry about him? Not his dead parents, not the taunting village that only used him for his cheap raids. RK did not move from where he sat. Slowly, his eyes shifted from the eternal blue he was gazing into towards the idol of Kali. Seeing her eyes closed, he felt puzzled. His senses started coming back. He felt human again. Thus came unbearable hunger. He wanted to find something to eat, but his physical body had succumbed to weakness. An hour passed by as he wished someone could come and tend to his hunger. He started hearing anklets. He crawled out of the shrine to see who it was with what energy he had left. A lady in a red sari was walking across the rubbles of the temple with a herd of cattle marching to graze. He screamed with the highest voice possible. She turned to him, looked at his pitiful condition and came to him. He begged her to give him some food. She gazed for moments at him and offered two cans to him. Opening them, he found one with milk and another with curd. RK mumbled that he was lactose intolerant. The lady laughed and apparently replied 
you know not but you actually have the habit of drinking both together <laughs> arge was taken aback he asked if they knew each other she only smiled at him and asked him to consume the only food she carried with her she told him once he gained energy he could collect what fruits he may find on the mountain rk helpless fed his stomach with both he thanked the lady took his time and began to walk to the orchards of the mountain he spent about a month surviving on fruits and vegetation spending most of his time exploring the mountain i was always forced to learn jack and jill went up the hill i was never taught of the miraculous mountains of india had i known i'd have happily exchanged places with rk to start a fresh he packed what little luggage and torn clothes he had and set to travel to the city he demanded and strongly stood his ground to collect every last penny that the villagers had to pay him he followed the birds in the sky that migrated for food in monsoons absent the wings he felt more liberated than these flying things he had made up his mind to make a name and earn he knew he was not the same but how different only time would let him know the first test was already here my company's advert for the exhibition had already begun even before the theft we had distributed paper ads pamphlets and what not to attract donations and investors for the international art exhibit one such pamphlet was handed over to him as he bought samosa in the heart of the city what caught his eyes was the photo of the antique painting of goddess kali's idol with closed eyes this image was very clear to him he knew where this was from he knew all the series of events had a deeper meaning he set out to meet the owner of prathengira art gallery which happened to be me it was such a busy day my private informers had no leads on the burglary the date was nearing less than 5 months to the exhibition my soul started shivering for the consequences of losing four paintings at such an hour came a direct request from the hr that some idiot was looking for a job i yelled of course because this hr would bring me every nonsensical request from any tom dick and harry he insisted that this person had information about the kali painting i jumped onto my feet and wondered if this would lead to the theft the hr took me to the stranger at my door what do you know of the kali painting i asked i am from where it was painted he replied i think i know why her eyes are closed i was intrigued there was a charm in this bearded man par in his eyes i knew the universe would have a plan i stepped forward shook his hands krishna dev roy i said introducing myself tenali ramakrishna you may call me rk he said at that very moment we realized at a later part of our story that the attached eyelids on goddess kali's idol had dropped down it was in a way as if she opened her big angry eyes please subscribe to this space and continue watching episode 2 link in the description also this series is available in other languages see if you'd like to watch in a language of your comfort